Hi, I'm glad you're here. I'm Marlene Allen and your body's chemistry, hormones and neurotransmitters are the focus of today's session. Now I want to let you know that you do not have to be present on this live stream and since you're registered you are included now and there will be a replay sent to you shortly afterwards as well. So um, I also want to let you know to please drink plenty of water today. We have some powerful clearings lined up for you and this will help to flush out the toxins and whatever else doesn't belong. Uh, I do have a chat box feature here, so you're welcome to use that. Say hi, put in your comments. Um, if you have a question for support, go ahead and ask that. Uh, you can also add in a couple of words of what you may be having an issue on uh, in regards to chemistry and human uh, hormones and uh, anything to do. Hormones have to do with the endocrine system and neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters have to do with the nervous system so we're going to be looking at both here today so if there's anything around those one or two words that um, you want to put in there we can see if we can add those to the clearing today um, we do have quite a bit to cover <laughs> several areas uh, several hormones and neurotransmitters so uh, this is a wonderful thing that you have chosen to do for this time and I, I want to thank you for showing up and being here for you and let's get started all right, so I'll start the slides. This is body chemistry, hormones, and neurotransmitter balancing. And I am Marlene Allen, and the um, I am also a cellular regeneration expert. I'm also the owner of Your Body Power, a certified master quantum health activator, and many more things. I specialize in midlife makeovers that reverse the debilitating effects of midlife aging. So I want to let you know that we are going, <laughs> we've started a lot of clearings and so we're letting go of what doesn't belong with love, of course, and with quantum activation. So quantum activations are uh, the route that we're using here to go into uh, and create a effect. So through quantum entanglement, which is what I am using, uh, that is how I'm going to be manipulating the particles and creating a desired uh, effect for you, whatever that happens to be to optimize this experience for you. So quantum energy transcends time and space. It's the healing and activation that happens in the past, in the present, and the future at the same time. Okay, so we can go into your past, past lives. We can go into future lives, right? And we can affect a change there as well as what's happening here currently. So by tapping into the life force energy of the body and activating and the intended beauty, love, and perfection of the optimally healthy human stem cell, and we can use that uh, as we do with the organ regeneration. Uh, but today we are going into the, the body's uh, areas where hormones and the neurotransmitters and the chemistry is produced and um, distributed and so forth. So that's what we're going to be doing through quantum uh, through quantum activations. So the clearing work that we have done and already started is chakras, chakra, chakra activation, uh, where we are balancing the chakras. And I'm going to check to see where everybody is at with that right now and uh, get going on that so we can make sure that all your chakras are balanced here first auras are cleared there's seven layers to your aura so let's get those cleared and balanced too and we're storing your life force and going into any areas that um, you know, you could maybe have a benefit in staying in a particular illness or uh, something that's not optimally um, correct for you. So if you're getting benefits from that, let's go ahead and let that particular block or program go to. Okay, very good. So... So yes, we're clearing the blocks and any energies that could have caused your chemistry, your body's chemistry to function poorly. And then uh, we're also looking at DNA programs, anything that could cause 
the chemistry to be out of whack, if you will, because of DNA programming. Uh, any dark energies affecting your chemistry, clearing those. Any low vibration emotions, clearing those. And yes, checking here for where we are with the energy centers. So let's continue on here for just a couple more minutes. Um, so just to let you know, uh, anytime today or whenever you're accessing the recording, you can also imagine that you're, you are healing yourself. Okay, so see any ailments or illnesses, any issues that you may have just melting away and disappearing. Okay, and so this is going to help open your mind to the possibility of being healed and it can lead to faster results. So you can do this anytime with anything really with with any issues so there are people with chronic conditions or maybe have some type of active um, condition or, or issue going and they cannot really imagine their life without this condition and it could actually slow healing once they allow old thought patterns around that to continue and they get attached to those negative experiences that they've had in the past and and get caught up in those patterns of negativity and get real comfortable there and kind of stick there in these negative experiences and they get in the way of your higher intentions so do yourself a favor then and book a session with me and you'll find and clear the root of your particular issue and clear that for you personally although when you registered I've read you and that's what the clearings are based on there can still be things on your timeline for example that can go much deeper that we can reveal when you're on a one-on-one -on -one situation so you know perhaps you had some uh, horrible experiences that the rest of the group were not clearing for that particular thing so that would be the time that we could bring those up so that that can come to completion so that you don't have to keep continuing to do this again and again and again right so let's continue with the clearings um, here for just a little bit and then we'll move on to optimizing the hormones and neurotransmitters and so let's actually have a sip of water here and then we'll begin Oh, very good. Life force energy. This is the secret behind everything. It's the energy ball that surges our, uh, to fuel our flame. And so without that, we could just peter out and age. So it's really the secret of longevity. And let's check where our life force is now. Well, we've gotten that up to 100%, haven't we? Yes, we have. Okay. So that's very good checking to see if we need to clear anything else not there no we're good so life force energy 100 percent, very good frequency of vibration critical to your health it's also phys not only physically but emotionally and mentally this is the chart that you can uh, identify where you may be at if we are in low vibration type of motions we would be caught up in the suffering category in the bottom here this is where the density is in our cells so we hold the density and the darkness in our cells when we are in these low vibration emotions just know that okay so your consciousness whatever your thoughts and beliefs are wherever your head is at the moment that is where your frequency is going to go right so you're going to want to stay up here <laughs> in the happiness the joy i love uh, in these areas that's where they say love or above that's the 500 uh frequency that's where you're in the flow and this is when things are going to start coming to you right synchronicities start happening this is the law of attraction how we manifest how we get the things that we desire right so staying in a higher frequency where your cells are lighter right so we are going to be releasing a lot of darkness from areas in your body today so we are actually going to be affecting a change of your frequency of vibration so whatever your before reading is your after reading should definitely be higher anytime we go into the cells for anything it could be regeneration of a gland or organ as well that is when we release density and darkness from the cells and we uh, increase your frequency of vibration. So we did have clear, healthy cells when we were babies <laughs> and we experienced joy and happiness. So what went wrong? Why are people losing the functioning 
of their physicality. Well, chemicals and toxins are short list here. We've loaded ourselves for a long time. Environmental pollutions, contaminated water, pharmaceuticals, household cleaners, personal health and beauty products. There are definitely some organic things that you can do there. I have a link on my website actually that goes to an organic uh, makeup. Uh, company absolutely wonderful products that you can put on your skin you don't want things on your skin that are going to be contaminating us right same with the household cleaners we used to use things like um, you know baking soda vinegar lemon salt all that stuff and it worked fine <laughs> for my mom and her mom I guess so uh, we can go back to that no need to be putting chemicals on our countertops going into our food right and speaking of food genetically modified food gmo franken food whatever they want to call it mm, not the thing to do stay organic and whole as much as possible also lack of movement breath being in touch with nature all those are so very important uh watching uh, television actually if you're watching broadcast television uh you are watching uh broadcast in the frequency of fear Okay, and so especially things happening on the news. Um, oh boy, you, can, you you're going to want to stay clear of that kind of thing because um, that's going to bring you down. We saw the chart where fear was. That's a hundred. That's not where you want to be. Okay, so anytime you want to bring yourself back down into those areas, you're going to resonate with some low vibe stuff. Some some we call them entity attachments. There's some real bad things there that resonate on that same frequency. That's not where we want to be. We want to be out of that frequency, not resonating with those things and beings. Okay, so watching television, uh, fear based, violence, war, traumas, all that. Um, and being in anger, jealousy, all those low vibe of emotions. Uh, being on your tablets, phones, uh, the Wi Fi, uh, allowing artificial intelligence, virtual intelligence. That is not where we want to go. We are humans. So let's stay in our bodies and let's stay coming from our heart, our heart space, instead of always being up here thinking all the time, right? And beliefs. What is it that we're believing? So all of these things can be contaminating your cells and, and compromising your chemistry. So that is absolutely not where we're trying to get to uh, today at all. So just keep in mind these uh contaminants and steer clear of them so we are going into your hormones and body chemistry today uh and balancing and clearing areas affecting low function in these areas so uh in chemical and chemistry and balance and we're going to take a low functioning hormone and improve it by identifying all the areas affecting the low function and then by clearing them okay so that is where we are headed so body chemistry Hormone balancing, um, you know, although we may not be aware of them, your endocrine system is constantly churning out hormones that control everything from your heart rate, metabolism, menopause, mood, sex drive, appetite, and more. Absolutely. And neurotransmitters, they're doing the same thing. A lot of them can uh, affect the brain and that. So uh, we're talking nervous system there. So anything that uh, is happening today just know that we're going to send a replay to you and what regardless of whether you're on the replay or you're here at this moment this is working for you right now too okay so let's continue here and we're going to move into balancing the individual hormones and neurotransmitters uh, if you want to get another drink of water whatever is calling to you but let's start in so our hormones are chemical messengers of the body they're responsible for some of the most important major functions of the body and it's about time we got to know the hormones that we depend on daily so hormones change in the uterus in the liver in the fat cells the adrenals the pancreas the thyroid and the hypothalamus and hormones trigger each other in feedback loops. So tampering with one changes how all the rest are going to work. Sometimes that can be beneficial and sometimes not. And midlife symptoms are often linked to problems in dealing with this increased hormone load, first in making the extra hormones, then in recycling them through the liver. And chemistry hormones themselves and human chemistry is the way that we've produced chemistry. Um, it's like our. Um, it's like our spirit. Uh, so 
its actions through the body are very much similar to the spirit in the body. So these hormones, that's what they're doing. And they regulate the body physiology based on signals from the brain. They actually transfer signal directly to respective organs or glands or systems for things or changes to happen. So they're like messengers carrying a message from the brain uh, to other organs. And they're produced by the secretory um, cells of specific glands. And these glands are of different types, which synthesize and secrete the concerned hormone, whatever that happens to be. But they do not release them into the blood. Instead, the blood flows through the glands that are making them and then carries them away. So they are termed as, uh, these are the endocrine glands. So here's the endocrine system on the slide here. And these where are where mm, hormones are produced. So let's look at issues then around hormones. So if you're having any hormone issues that you know about, uh, there can be uh, reasons for these, right? So we're going to ask ourselves these questions. All right. These are questions that may resonate with you. Maybe one of them, maybe all of them, or maybe none of them. But usually there's there's something, um, you know, around hormones that uh, could be, uh, you know, a question for you. So let's go ahead and go through these. You can come back to these later and ask your, you know, you know, these questions and get answers from your higher self. That might be uh, a better recommendation is come back. But let's ask ourselves, what issues are ready to be finally resolved? And what am I holding on to that is no longer serving my highest and greatest good? What is the conflict in my mind that needs resolution? What question, if I asked it, would unlock the subconscious belief that keeps me from having internal balance? And what part of me have I not accepted? What am I not willing to see? know, perceive, or receive? And what will it take for me to experience more internal stability? Right? Good questions. <laughs> now, we can say the affirmation together out loud if you'd like. I accept myself at the deepest level. I am willing to feel, listen, and honor my inner intuition. I call my mind to order and allow my body to follow. Wonderful questions actually come up by uh, Wendy Jensen. So as mentioned, you may want to journal these and get some answers from yourself about, about the um, issues for you. So uh, while we are back in this area here, I'm going to talk about telomeres. Okay, so telomeres are um, in the uh, with the DNA. Okay, so that's all in the DNA. So we are going to go ahead and lengthen your telomeres right now, right? So they can um it can help you grow younger, and you know our telomeres get shortened and so forth, and that uh, ages people. So you want to have full uh, grown back telomeres, so you don't age as <laughs> as rapidly in the skin, the organ cells. It's you know very much. Uh, reflects damage by these uh, shortened or compromised telomeres. So let's spend a little bit of time here improving the brain telomeres because that will, will help with the 12 uh, neurotransmitters and how things are directed in the brain. So I'm going to continue with that. And I'm just going to mark down here I am with this. And we're going to continue for the sake of time uh, for everybody on the call today. Um, because just watching me, you're not going to see anything <laughs> happen. Just maybe my eyes are closed or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to continue with that. It's a very, very important uh, piece here. So we're going to want to see your telomeres lengthening. All right, so let's go into the individual hormones now, and we'll start with hormones, and we're going to balance these to optimal for you. What that means is could be a real individual for yourself. This does not mean that we're increasing anything, although we certainly can if that's what optimal means. Uh, maybe it means decreasing, you know, so maybe you don't require any more estrogen, for example, or we're setting these at the correct level for you. So let's look at melatonin. 
Um, and let's go ahead and see melatonin. If it was on the empty, maybe we want to see a gauge now that is going to go to full. Okay, so the full mark is whatever full should happen to be for you. It's your optimal level of melatonin in the body. This is your biological clock, melatonin. It's the hormone responsible for the way you feel throughout the day. You know, if you're alert, right? Or, you know, if you're drowsy, you can blame the melatonin on that too. So let's see melatonin going all the way up to the full mark. All right, very good. Let's go to serotonin. This is the one that you can blame for PMS, and if you have a moody teenager, serotonin actually controls the mood, the appetite, and your sleep cycles. It's mood boosting. So let's see this going from empty to full, and the optimal for you, whatever that happens to be. Okay, it uh, has a mood boosting effect, um, and it's also known as nature's feel-good chemical, associated with learning, memory regulating sleep, digestion, regulates your mood, some muscular functions. And so imbalances of serotonin, um, you know, if the brain doesn't produce enough to regulate mood or stress level, uh, and low levels of this can actually cause depression, migraines, weight gain, insomnia, carbohydrate cravings, and an excess level can actually cause irritation or agitation, confusion or sedation. So we don't want too much. We just want the optimal <laughs> amount, whatever that happens to be for you. Okay, very good. And I will be coming back to check on each one individually again, too, again, for the sake of time. Uh, but we are getting these pretty close to where we want them. All right now, so thyroxin, uh, let's see the gauge. If we are anywhere from empty to a half or wherever, anywhere in between, we're going to see that gauge go all the way up to optimal, up to the full mark. So this is a form of thyroid hormone. It increases the rate of your metabolism. It affects protein synthesis. And that's the process that the cells go through uh, to build protein. So definitely an important hormone here. Okay, very good. Nice. T3, T4, these are also thyroid hormones. Let's go ahead and start seeing the gauge move to full for the T3 and T4 thyroid hormones. Um, they help in controlling the metabolism as well. and. Uh, they also regulate weight. They determine your energy levels, internal body temperature, the health of your skin and hair. And there is a loop here with the T3 and T4. It goes, uh, you know, there's the hypothalamus. And of course, it's a thyroid hormone, but it also involves the pituitary as well which is the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, right? Okay. Okay, wonderful. Let's move on to epinephrine. Let's go ahead now and see the gauge moving all the way to full for epinephrine for you. So this one is, uh, it's adrenaline, right? So, and it's responsible for what's known as the fight or flight response that tells you when to fight or you know run run away from danger and so some of the bodily responses that uh, this hormone kicks in could be dilated pupils and increased heart rate tensing of the muscles that kind of thing can happen um, unfortunately adrenaline is released now where we don't have to run away from danger it can just be from a car horn honking at you it can send people into an increased heart rate, tensing of the muscles, <laughs> and who knows what, right? So uh, you may want to look into the adrenals class for this one. 
most people have uh, by midlife I've, i usually see around 30 percent function of the adrenals and that's where this is coming from so we can reset the stressed levels okay and so we were good with that one okay so norepinephrine this one let's see the gauge now let's set that get that going get that moving get that meter running we want that optimal for you this is um, noradrenaline is another name controls the heart and blood pressure and controls sleep arousal emotions and it gives you uh, it can give you like an anxious feeling if you have too much or if you have too little you can feel depressed from that so let's get that all the way up where it needs to be very good okay and moving into dopamine this is an important one let's get that meter running let's get that set to optimal for you this one uh, controls the heart rate it assists with our perception so that deciphers what is real and what is not real also it's a feel good it gives you that feel good it's like when you check something off your to-do list <laughs> gives you a little rush of dopamine all right so good we're good that one and now this is a anti-mural malarian hormone uh, let's get that started to move we're going to move that to where it needs to be now maybe this doesn't need to be um, anywhere if you're a male right so this uh, happens to be an inhibitor for the release of prolactin that's the protein responsible for lactation or breastfeeding so that may or may not be relevant for you but wherever that level is of optimal is we are there very good all right the next one adiponectin it's let's move the meter wherever that happens to be for optimal for you let's get that all the way to where it needs to go this is a protein hormone regulates metabolic processes um, such as the re regulation of glucose glucose so important the liver energy pancreas all that okay very good adrenal corticotropic hormone let's get that meter moving it assists in synthesizing corticosteroids and they're responsible for the stress response so as soon as I said adrenal uh, at the beginning, you know that's from the adrenals. That's where the adrenaline and the cortisol are being produced. So yeah, the stress re response and the blood electrolyte levels. So we don't need the Gatorades and all those, right? Energy drinks and so forth for electrolytes and other um, physiologic sy systems in the body. very nice okay angiotensinogen let's get that meter moving very good and this is responsible for the narrowing of blood vessels vasoconstriction is another word for it and it doesn't seem like this one is a problem for very many people it's moving very quickly nice and antidiuretic hormone let's move that meter you can see a kidney there on the screen in the picture this hormone is also known um, by other names but it's responsible for retaining water within the kidneys antidiuretic so if this one is optimal you don't need to take medications for this stuff right very good okay so atrial natriuretic peptide let's move the meter here it's a peptide hormone secreted by the cells of the heart and other muscles and other um, it's mostly involved with control of water and sodium and potassium 
and bloating and fat within the body. So we really do want this one to be optimized. Okay, very good. Calcitonin, let's move the meter here. <clears throat> Aids in constructing bone and reducing blood calcium. So wherever we need that to be, optimally for ourselves, that's where we're headed. All right. Okay. Cholestoctinin. It's the meter's moving on that one right now. Uh, this one's important. It aids in the release of digestive enzymes for the pancreas. And then it also acts as an appetite suppressant. Digestive, releasing the digestive enzymes. Okay, very good. Corticotropin releasing hormone releases cortisol in response to stress. Now, we really uh, don't need that cortisol pumping continually in our body, right? So the corticotropin releasing hormone is getting triggered uh, more than it really needs to be. So let's just see. Here, this one really needs to be. Okay. Erythropoietin or something similar. <laughs> Let's get the meter moving to that. Uh, stimulates the production of erythrocytes. And these are the blood cells for delivering oxygen. Very important that we get those. Very good. Okay. Now we have follicle stimulating hormone. Stimulates the follicles within the sex organs of both males and females. So we both need that follicle stimulating hormone. All right. Okay, very good. And we have gastrin. Now let's get the meter re moving on gastrin. Uh, this is gonna secrete gastric acid. And we need gastric acid. Yes. Yes, we do. This is for digestion. Okay, very good. And ghrelin. Let's move that. We're definitely going to need ghrelin. Now, it's a hunger stimulant. And it also aids in the secretion of the growth hormone. Human growth hormone, HGH, uh, from the pituitary. So this can stimulate hunger at the right times, right? So we want this at, at an optimal level, whatever that happens to be. We don't want, you know, a whole lot. We don't want to be stimulating our hunger all the time, but we need it to be where it should be, right? And glucagon, this is, let's move the meter on our glucagon. Uh, it helps to increase blood glucose levels. So wherever they happen to need to be, glucagon will make sure it gets there. All right, very nice. Okay, now the next is growth hormone releasing hormone. Let's move that meter. 
This is the hormone that releases growth hormone. And you may think, well, I'm already an adult. I don't really need to get any, you know, bigger. <laughs> but we, um, growth hormone is for cell reproduction as well. And we're, we're going to always want that. Uh, new cells, rejuvenation, regeneration, and so forth. Now, this brings us to human growth hormone. Let's get that where we want that. Move that meter. It stimulates growth and the reproduction of cells. Very nice. Okay. Good. Now let's get the meter running on this one. It's if, if you need it, right? Human uh, chorionic gonadotropin. And it uh, keeps the immune system from attacking uh, a forming embryo during pregnancy. Um, actually, it, it recognizes it as self. So a human hormone, recognizes it as human. Yep. Very good. And insulin. All right. So this one, let's, let's get this meter moving right now to optimal, wherever that happens to be for you. This is the hormone responsible for anabolic effects. It's uh, glucose intake, mostly. And it's released by the pancreas and allows the body to use glucose or sugar from carbs in your food for energy or store the glucose for future. Also helps in keeping uh, blood sugar levels from getting too high. So that could be considered the hyperglycemia or too low is the hypoglycemia. And I, I, I know I moved backwards, but it was like it was... Um, not quite there. So this is an important one. So we'll spend whatever time it's requesting here. We get the insulin resistance. Yeah. Don't want that. So let's go ahead and make sure that's optimal. Okay. The next is the insulin... Mm -hmm. or thereabouts looks like we've lost some of our slides here for some reason uh, we have insulin like growth factor and let's move the meter on that it has the same effects as insulin while it also regulates the growth and the development of cells so it's a growth factor. Okay. And looks like some of our slides here are missing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's look at leptin a couple of them here before we get to this one um, and let's go to the meter for leptin let's get that moving leptin we we want this one it's going to slow down the appetite while it simultaneously speeds up metabolism very important leptin is All right. Okay, very good. Now let's move the meter here on luteinizing hormone. This one, it's, uh, yes, it aids ovulation in women, <clears throat> but it is also beneficial for men uh, because of uh, the testosterone production for men. So we all need this luteinizing hormone. Very good. Okay. The next one is 
melanocyte stimulating hormone. That's the one here on the slide. Let's get the meter running and see this gauge coming all the way up to optimal. It produces melanocytes, which are, you know, responsible for the pigment in your hair and your skin. So if you have graying hair, you can thank the, the lower decreased levels of this hormone. Let's get this one optimal. So this is uh, this has been compromised. And there's also a DNA program here for not only this one, but there's DNA programs around um, chemistry. So we are um, working in, in DNA here too. So uh, we're going to remove or let go of compromising or faulty programs in DNA. Uh, for allowing these things to to get uh, you know reduced if we need these hormones uh, either or out of balance somehow whatever the proportion is DNA can also play um, also bloodline uh, many things right so that's part of the clearings that I did previously to the live stream um, bloodline things like that um, uh, patterns things that are low vibration dark energies for example okay orexin let's move the meter here this is uh, going to increase the appetite but while also increasing your alertness and energy levels very good okay oxytocin well this one is we're moving the meter here if you whatever optimal is for you this one plays a role in reproduction aids in orgasm and is also responsible for the release of breast milk so we still want the oxytocin even if we're past hormone or menopause <laughs> hormone period of time um, for that orgasm uh, part that's responsible for that. So let's get that up there. Okay, wonderful. The next one is the parathyroid hormone. This one, let's get that meter going. It's mainly responsible for the activation of vitamin D. Now, parathyroid, that is the gland. It's in with the thyroid, but it's a separate gland altogether. And this one is, uh, you know, for calcium and phosphorus, bone density, that kind of thing. So the parathyroid hormone is actually activating vitamin D. Very nice. Okay, so moving into prolactin. This one, uh, let's move the meter here. It's a contributor in sexual satisfaction and also the production of breast milk. It's released by the pituitary gland after childbirth for lactation uh, to breastfeed. And levels of this hormone rise during pregnancy also plays an important role in fertility so that it inhibits that FH, uh, FSH, which is the follicle stimulating hormone and the gonadotropin releasing hormone, the GNRH. So if you're pregnant okay so good all right very nice next one is secretin now this one let's get the, the meter and the gauge where we want this this inhibits gastric acid production so where we don't require as much this is going to tone that down so we do want that Okay, very good. Next up is aldosterone. Let's move that meter. It's responsible for absorbing sodium in the kidneys. Increase the volume of the blood within the body.
All right, very nice. Okay, that one's good. All right, testosterone here, we, we're all going to require this one. It's major uh, male hormone. Let's get that meter started. Uh, but it's also responsible for the sex drive, development of sex organs, and changes that take place during puberty. And women require it and produce it as well. Um, there is a study that actually shows that um, obese women, uh, when given testosterone, uh, lost more body fat and abdominal fat and gained more muscle mass than women who were actually just given a placebo. Now, testosterone is produced in the ovaries and the adrenals for women, adrenals for men, and the testes for men. It's a male sex hormone uh, mostly. It's an anabolic steroid by nature. Uh, so it does help in building body muscle. So for men, it's, uh, you know, the development of male reproductive tissues, the testes, the prostate, and so forth. Um, and it promotes a secondary sexual characteristics like um, muscle mass, bones, growth of body hair. That thing, um, And if it's uh, insufficient in men, it could lead to uh, bone loss, frailty, and a decreased sex drive for sure. Okay, good. Andro Dion, uh, this is essentially estrogen. Let's get the meter running on this one, wherever optimal happens to be for you. Okay, so excess estrogen in females increases the risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, depression, moodiness. But if, uh, if it's a low level, uh, then it can lead to acne skin problems, um, thinning skin, or hair loss. So we do want that. We, we want that in balance. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, estradiol in males, we, um, you know, this hormone can prevent cell death. Of the germ cells, so um, it, but in females, it's it's an overdrive, <laughs> and it can accelerate height and metabolism, uh, maintain blood vessels and skin. It does aid in water retention, and aids in hormone sensitive cancers. Estradiol. Okay, very good. Now we're moving into progesterone. Let's get that meter moving. This one's going to protect against cancer. It counteracts estrogen's stimulating effect on the breast and uterine tissue. Yeah, so we want this. Absolutely. Boost your energy. By stimulating the thyroid and heats up metabolism. Also relaxes your mood, produces some good sleep because of its volume-like effect. <laughs> Very good for nighttime. Nourishes your hair and clears your skin because it reduces male hormones, uh, the androgens. It also lightens your period uh, by counteracting estrogen's effect on the uterine lining. Also prevents um any type autoimmune type diseases it regulates immune function reduces inflammation and it builds bones and muscle it stimulates uh, bo build bone building cells and growth of muscles and it's also uh, contributes and supports pregnancy and also plays a role in sexual desire so this one's a big one especially for women it's uh, it's huge yeah. Very nice. Okay, so now we have lipotropin. Let's get that meter moving. Stimulates production of pigment. 
So it aids the melanin production, which is the skin and the hair coloring. So for graying hair, for example, uh, we are not obviously having a balanced lipotropin levels. Okay. Okay, very good. And brain naturatic peptide. Let's move that meter. This one reduces blood pressure, helps in reducing. Very nice. All right, histamine. Let's move this meter. This is a hormone in the stomach, mostly, and it um, aids in the secreting of gastric acid. Okay. Very good. Endothelian. Let's move the meter here. This one's going to control muscle contractions within your stomach. Yeah. Okay. Ankophalan. Let's move this meter. That gauge. Move that gauge to optimal. This one is a pain regulator. A natural pain regulator in the body. Very good. And let's move to cortisol. So let's move this meter. Now, obviously, we're not going to want to pump this up to, you know, the moon. We want this just to be balanced. Okay, so let's just move this meter to where this is going to be balanced optimally for you. It's produced by the adrenal glands. Helps you to stay healthy, energetic. Controls physical and physio, um, psychological stress. So what you perceive as stress, yeah? and physically and so in a dangerous you know condition uh, it increases your heart rate blood pressure respiration and uh, secretes you know cortisol to cope uh, with the situation but high levels of this uh, cortisol consistently can cause ulcers high blood pressure anxiety uh, cholesterol but low levels in the body can uh, cause alcoholism um and um a condition that's responsible for a chronic fatigue syndrome i think maybe 99 percent here i'm going to come back and make sure that we're all up to par on everything so yeah it's not wanting to move <laughs> The rest of the way here, it's going to be a little while. That's what it's telling me. So we're going to continue working on that. And I will make sure we come back um, myself today and get that all the way. So now we can move into neurotransmitters. So these are the chemical messengers. Again, they help our bodies think, feel, and move. They're molecules that are used by the nervous system to transmit messages between neurons or from neurons to muscles. Um, the levels though of some key neurotransmitters, especially in many women, they're often too high or they could be too low or just out of balance. So many neurological diseases and mental disorders are due to improper functioning of neurotransmitters. Now these can be things such as Al uh, Alzheimer's, right? Um, yep, they can be uh, migraines, they can um, be uh, ADD issues, mental, you know, mental disorders or uh, neurological disorders, uh, it could be uh, depression or anger, so that could mean uh, like too little serotonin, there could be stroke 
in there. There could be Parkinson's disease. That's usually too little dopamine. Um, schizophrenia, uh, also dopamine, but too much. Um, there could be epilepsy. That's too little GABA. That's G-A-B-A. -A. Uh, memory and brain function. That's glutamate. So we're doing the clearing to include depression and all mental illness. Absolutely, we're doing that as well. So the ability to enjoy a happy, balanced life with neurotransmitters functioning at 100% optimal. So that's supporting sustainable, pleasurable life. Okay. So seeing where we are with that clearing there was a big 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 clearing here big big clearing getting 67 percent complete i'm going to continue with this one absolutely okay all right so i'm going to continue there and we'll go to the first neurotransmitter and we already talked about that, um, but this is acetylcholine, or ACH. So this is, we want to set the meter now. We want to see that gauge going to full, optimal, whatever that is for us. It's the first neurotransmitter to be discovered, and it's used by the autonomic nervous system. So such as like smooth muscles of the heart in an inhibitory as an inhibitory neurotransmitter and responsible for stimulation of muscles, including in the gastrointestinal system, is used everywhere in the brain and it can be related to Alzheimer's disease. So we want optimal levels here, optimal, whatever that happens to be for you. All right, and next we want to look at dopamine. Now I know we already went into dopamine in the Hormones uh, area, we are including it here in the neurotransmitters area, and we're going to also check it again for completion. It's associated with the reward mechanisms in the brain. So it's involved with mood, motivation, and attention. Um, schizophrenics, they can have too much dopamine, and uh, people with Parkinson's can have too little. So you don't want either. Okay, um, and here um, I am getting about 99%. I want to come back to this one as well and make sure that we get this optimal. Yeah, I'm getting the message again. This is going to take a while. <laughs> Norepinephrine, uh, we already talked about. Um, it's noradrenaline. Let's go ahead again and uh, see this at optimal, uh, synthesized directly from dopamine is what it is. It's the precursor to epinephrine. So it brings the nervous system into high alert and increases our heart rate and our blood pressure. And this one's also important for forming memories. Interestingly enough, so if we don't have a good memory, Maybe that's why. All right, very good. And the next is glutamate. Let's see that meter moving. It's involved with most aspects of normal brain function, including cognition, memory, and learning. Glutamate, very, very important. And this one, too, I'm getting that it's going to be a while. Let's come back to this one. I will come back and check on it. Next one is GABA. This is the Y-amino butyric acid. Let's move that meter. Relieves anxiety. And this one is synthesized directly from glutamate. And it slows and stops the firing of brain cells, bringing calmness. So when we want to relax and slow down. 
prevents the brain from becoming overexcited. And if you're lacking it in certain parts of the brain, then that's when epilepsy can result. And in the central nervous system, you know, it's, it's there in high concentrations, prevents the brain from becoming overexcited. Um, but if you're lacking it in certain parts of the brain, then that's when epilepsy can result. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, this one here. We're about 99% here. Um, again, important. So I'm going to make sure that this does go the rest of the way. Yeah. And serotonin, again, this is one we just did, uh, but let's check the meter here. It's synthesized in two steps from the amino acid tryptophan. That's what comes from turkeys, doesn't it? Um, it regulates our attention and other complex cognitive functions, such as sleep or dreaming or eating or mood pain regulation, and too little uh, can lead to depression, anger control, and other issues. Don't want to be lacking in that. We want to feel good. And I'm getting... 98% here, so let's mark that, and I will come back and check on serotonin. Now, we have uh, meridians. Oh, let's go back here for a minute. Uh, meridians in chemistry. So this is, um, let's tune up the meridians, uh, the ones that are related to body chemistry. Uh, there's... Um, Let's check here. I want to clear the meridians of harmful programs and clear any blocks there. So the ability to, to um, ability to communicate with all the body parts. That's what we want. Yeah. The meridians communicating properly. All right, very good. Let's check on it. Just about clear here. So I'm going to come back and uh, continue with the meridians and your chemistry. It's very important. You want everything communicating <laughs> with everywhere. Uh, your chemistry. Yep. So that's like integrating the whole whole systems together here okay let's now check on your aura and uh, your chemistry okay so cleaning out the aura Whew. beautiful Nice. Okay, and while we are here too, um, I uh, started a clearing on depletion. So feeling depleted, being depleted uh, at a certain time or a certain point um, as it relates to your body uh, chemistry. So the programming of completion uh, prevents the natural supply and demand, right? So uh, limitation, lack, limitation, depletion, that that ability to, you know, receive somehow has been, um, you know, depleted, right? So out of balance. So let's check on 
depletion. And that's it. Yeah, that's in the DNA. So, um, let's send some beautiful gold god healing energy through the DNA anywhere that would have had depletion or lack or limitation. Blocking our receiving, blocking our natural supply and demand. Okay. Very good. And let's send in some healing energy there and heal that up. Also, let's go into DNA and at the at the body um, yep. a lot of things going here in DNA <laughs> um, yeah a lot of programs going on here so the programs which would be uh, anything that would allow your hormones and neurotransmitters to come out of balance to allow them to actually be depleted or to be in a low or high too low or too high of levels whatever that happens to be out of optimum out of balance programs around that Or, you know, it could be maybe at a certain age, you know, the, the DNA program uh, is set to, you know, to, like, for example, the melatonin or the, the, the uh, pigment of the hair, for example. Why would your hair go gray at a certain age? Some people's goes gray uh, way before other people's. So what is that? You know, why? What happened there? So that's what we're looking at. And go of many, many, many programs, faulty programs. Okay. Check if I'm Let's check if I've got them all here, if there's programs I'm missing, anything I'm missing at all. Yeah, anything around the ability to enjoy perfectly balanced hormones, um, body chemistry, neurotransmitters, Having full function there. And let's check where I got with that clearing. Eighty-eight percent overall. So that's not bad. Uh, we want that to a hundred, so I'm gonna continue on with that. And Let's see where we're at with the clearing to um, mental illnesses, depression, that kind of thing. That's 74%. So we are getting there. And uh, I'm going to continue on with that just to be certain. And... All right, very good. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and um, again, we're going to be wanting to drink. Um, if you can drink every half hour water, uh, that's the best for the brain when you can do that. It doesn't have to be a whole glass every half an hour, but, you know, a uh, few ounces, right? Oh, yes. Okay, very good. So hydration, again, for three days is optimal. Um, good nutrition, so healthy, whole, organic. Uh, stay away from the process, the canned stuff, and, and all that as much as possible. Uh, you know, you have to do what you have to do, obviously. Uh, so just letting you know what would be optimal for your body. Uh, is everything as close to nature as possible. Everything close to being whole, fresh and organic grown um, choosing to going out and drinking alcohol or taking uh, sleep medications uh, there may be other medications that you're prescribed and that you're taking um, I'm not telling you not to take them but I'm just saying that there are um, certain meds that will stop or halt um, or slow down the cellular regrowth anything that we started any kind of uh, in the areas that we've been working in in the body here um, so um, and it can also put things back out of balance um, same way with your consciousness so if you have thoughts and beliefs that are all oh, this is not working for me or um, I don't know what it is I, I am always hungry don't care if that thing you know <laughs> if the gastrin and the you know all those other uh, hormones it doesn't matter it's you know if you have thoughts like that you can definitely counteract what we just did there yes exactly your your uh, your own consciousness your own perception your own beliefs can certainly throw things off yep so um yeah you're gonna want to drink as much water as possible we have toxins coming through from all the areas that we've been working in, which is pretty much the whole body, <laughs> right? So improvements that you may notice with a functioning chemistry in your body include less, uh, less appetite and hunger. It could be reduced sugar cravings, weight loss, uh, better regulation of blood pressure, balanced emotions, mood and behavior. Could be increased energy, better memory, less aches and pains, decreased belly fat, improved concentration, lowered cholesterol and of course there can be a lot more <laughs> we worked in a lot of areas in the body so getting the body regenerating at night um, that's the most powerful way and you can have the chemistry working there so um, you know stopping eating three hours before uh, bedtime is the most optimal so that the body is not working on digesting food it's actually working on building new cells so if you're hungry later on you know have some water right so that can quench your um, your hunger um, you know and break the cell down in the body down you know one of the things that does that is sugar so having less sugar is going to be more beneficial for you and we're going to check um, also, you can check to see if your glands and organs, are they up to 100% functioning? Are they capable? Are they even able to produce 100% chemistry? So if they're not, then, then the answer is no. And how about the brain directing that chemistry? If it's not up to 100%, also, then, um, you know, the chemicals that it produces um, and regulates and so forth, they're probably not going to be at 100%. Also, as we saw today, most of us were um, requiring adjustment there. So that's why it's also important to get things adjusted, uh, get your other uh, organs and glands um, optimized as well, get in touch with nature, go and reset your biorhythms. We've reset your hormones and uh, neurotransmitters, so now it's time to reset your body's biorhythms by getting out into nature, even if that means just taking a walk around the block. It doesn't matter what it is, getting out there, uh, being in touch with nature, leaving your phone at home. <laughs> okay, this could be a time to bring your journal and maybe going back to uh, some questions we asked earlier about hormones and, you know, hormone balance and see if any of those an questions bring up answers from you, from your higher self, getting in touch with what may be going on or what may be threw off 
uh, that you're balanced to begin with. So this is a wonderful recommendation and uh, one that I certainly um, recommend for you because it's it's uh, it's so this is where you come to to reverse the debilitating effects of midlife aging at yourbodypower.com and this was amazing and you will want to grad congratulate yourself today uh, for being here uh, your hormones and neurotransmitters your body's chemistry are on their way back to being uh, in a in balance in perfection right now to their beauty love and uh, and that perfection that we are going for that optimal whatever that is for you right so uh, so you may feel things immediately taking place you may uh, feel things over time and that's definitely uh, probably more accurate uh, as time goes on so another reason to keep a journal keep notes to um, track your process or, and your improvements and results shifts and so forth so you could be feeling uh you know a little refreshed right now or maybe a little tired either way uh enjoy this time that you've taken for yourself today rest if your body requests it and uh, drink water get great nutrition get out into nature love yourself love your body and i'll send the replays soon to you filled with gratitude enjoy namaste